fuck even is a baker's dozen? Thirteen. Well, that's just dumb. I know, right? The bakers don't know how to count. Is that what I'm supposed to believe here? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Star Wars Every Week Forever, the podcast in which we watch one Star Wars movie every week forever. <laughs> this week, A New Hope. Chris. Uh, yeah? How are you doing? How was your watch? Uh, Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope, is a movie, and I watched it. <laughs> I watched the shit out of it. <laughs> Oh, is there any interesting notes are, about are your gonna, Are we going to want a second take here, guys? <laughs> <laughs> is there any interesting notes about your watch, Chris? Um, uh, it's It was a lot funnier this time for some reason. Oh, <laughs> for I some reason. Sad. <laughs> <laughs> I just vision Chris just looking up and staring at the ceiling, smiling, recording. <laughs> Because he is so fucking out of his mind high. God. I envy you, Chris. <laughs> uh, Josh, how was uh, your watch? I, you know, it was a new hope for the fourth time in half a year. Woo! It was a new hope, but at normal speed. <laughs> a new... It was The Force Awakens, but slower. <laughs> ben, how was your watch? Porkins hit me hard this week, I'm not gonna lie. Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I know you are! You were dead serious the first time that we brought up Porkins. It just, it, that was it not a bit! Like, no, that wasn't a bit. I've, I have... A witness who has seen me cry over pork. I really feel like it needs to be stressed how much that's not a bit. <laughs> it's not a bit. In no <laughs> it's way is it really a bit. not a bit. I actually have notes on Porkins for this week. When oh, I when I asked God. if Ben wanted to do a Star Wars Every Week Forever podcast, I knew that he was overly emotionally attached to Porkins, and it was part of the reason I brought him on. Can I? <laughs> can I ask? Yes. Let's dig into this, Ben. Oh, What's no. going on with Porkins? <laughs> I just, what, is, what is it about Porkins? I that emotionally just hits you so hard? resonate with Porkins. How? You mean how? The man's barely in the movie. How do you emotionally resonate with Porkins? We don't choose our heroes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Early, uh,. Podcast title contender right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, no, it I turns just... out this movie's uh, fucking hilarious when you watch it at 9 o'clock in the morning, an hour after dropping a CBD edible. <laughs> uh, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. Because, uh... There's a there's a big difference between, you know, just, yeah, it's just CBD. It's like a ibuprofen and, like, full spectrum where it's like, yeah, it's CBD. <laughs> 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 and uh, this movie was a lot more fun to watch this week for some reason. <laughs> for some reason. For some reason. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, having an episode where Chris talks about uh, having a CBD edible while watching the pod race. Oh my fucking god! Yeah, get it out now. Get it right. all out one, now. I, one of the one of these rotations, like I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it. It's probably like rotation like thirty or something. Like Josh and I'll god. just hole ourselves up in like a a hotel room and drop acid and watch one of these <laughs> fucking movies. <laughs> that sounds fantastic here in rotation four, actually. I first but, uh, first you said movie? rotation thirty. You said Rotation 30, and that was the first time that I really had an existential crisis. All of a sudden, you said that, and I disassociated, and then you said, drop acid and watch Star Wars, and I was like, yeah, I'm back in. We'll, uh, we'll hold ourselves up in a hotel room and watch uh, Rise of Skywalker. 
Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know if that would... Acid and Rise of Skywalker sound like a terrible combination. I mean... I feel <laughs> like it would make one of those things way more tolerable and... One of those things way <laughs> harder work. to get through. I just love hearing Chris <laughs> take a swig of something and go, I mean, and then just dead silence. <laughs> Thank you. I can't edit it out now. It's just, it's just water. For uh -huh. water. Uh-huh. Just water. <laughs> um, <sighs> this fucking book. Okay. Oh, yes. This book made me angry. Okay. Not only is Porkins not mentioned, the the man who sacrificed it all, our our savior, our lord, not mentioned. They don't even mention Red Six. They they are trying to silence the truth of Porkins's sacrifice for all of <laughs> all of the go the fucking galaxy at large is this we've made a cult in our podcast is this just like the next thing it's like crazy fucking conspiracy theories that we spread across the internet excuse me have They're we not already done Putin? that <laughs> we've no but like are we gonna start a social media campaign where it's like oh why God. are you silencing porkins lucas films disney why do you hate porkins all i'm saying is not a single mention. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. Of the most vital character in all of Star Wars canon. <laughs> you can't say that after I said that this is not a bit. Because now you're making it a bit. But I love Porkins. I know I you just, do, goddammit. I, I need... <laughs> so I had to Google... Because I've never actually Googled... Porkins is actor. Uh, he's in a lot of stuff. No he's in a lot us. of stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know how it's got the people also ask section on Google where with a oh, bunch no. of drop down yeah. boxes? So uh -huh. I need you, the third one down after why did Porkins die and what happened to Porkins is <laughs> are there Porkins in Rogue One? Wait, hold on. I need to see if this is true. That's... Where is the drop-downs? Oh my god. It really is. Are there Porkins in Rogue One? <laughs> oh no. It's a screenshot. Are there Porkins in Rogue One? <laughs> it's a real thing. Google? Hey, Google? What the fuck? There's a fucking article from 2016 <laughs> entitled "We Need to Talk About Porkins." Okay, ben, did this you is write the rest this? of the podcast now. This is ben, the rest did you of the podcast this? now. This is I the did, rest of the I podcast. I did not write that, unfortunately. <laughs> what's Please what's this article? Hey, hey, what's uh, what's Porkins' midichlorian count? <laughs> I feel that. I am being made fun of. <laughs> and it's not it's hard not to make fun Listen, of Porkins the I'm opening not... line from this article. I am in no way making fun of Jeff All right, Porkins. listen here fucking article. Fucking fuck it who wrote this? Uh, the Reb sure the Rebel well, pilot Well laugh it up fuzzballs because the actor who played Porkins had more more of an interesting life than any of us. <laughs> That's true. He was a classmate of Tommy Lee Jones? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is the title of this episode just gonna be Porkins? We hardly knew ye. Like what are we we're just going through Rob fucking we're going through his whole, whole fucking career in this article I'll, right now. Why are we doing this? I'll have Robert you know. Robert the co-founder of National Lampoon, went to St. Mark's at the same time as Hootkins and Jones. The musicians, Steve Miller and Bob Skaggs, 
We're just a few years ahead of him. I don't know who I don't know who Buscax is, to be a hundred percent honest. But they weren't the only people of note at St. Mark's. In the summer of '63, Hootkins, Hootkins was the only student to enroll for a Russian class taught by Mrs. Ruth Payne at the school. This is where we find out that uh, Porkins is the machine. Oh my God, no! <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This got fucking juicy. It was an arrangement that seemed to work out for everyone until it turned out Lee had been using the Payne Garage to store six. 0.5 millimeter caliber Mar- Carcano rifles what that he fuck? would allegedly use to assassinate U.S. President John Jesus F. Kennedy Christ. from the what? sixth floor southeast corner <laughs> window of the book depository. As the sole student in Ruth Payne's Russian class at St. Mark's, Hootkins was interviewed by the FBI about the assassination, but it was eventually determined that Ruth and Marina didn't know what Lee was planning, and they were in the clear. Lee Harvey Oswald, of course, was killed by Dallas nightclub owner Jack Ruby on live television just two days after JFK's death, pouring gasoline on an inferno of conspiracy theories. Wait. So essentially so, what we've just learned... Okay, this really is the rest of the episode. Did, what we Porkins, just learned, did Porkins assassinate JFK? <laughs> You're right. You are right, writer. We do need to talk about Porkins. <laughs> Listen, I, I would like to stop talking about Porkins, guys. <laughs> no, God, we are not. I can't, I, can't, I can't wait. Inevitably, I will come across someone on Reddit one day that hears about this from here, goes down this rabbit hole, goes fucking nuts with it, and I will read someone on fucking Reddit like five years from now like, Listen, I only believe two things. One, the Earth is flat. And two, Porkins killed JFK. <laughs> I can't. I can't. This is too much for information for my brain to process. Uh. After all the excitement, Hookins went to Princeton to study astrophysics before transferring to, okay, Oriental study, Studies. That's when a friend of his, aware that Hootkins' true passion lie in acting, suggested he should move to London to study at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts. That friend, by the way, was John Lithgow. What is happening? <laughs> I'm just going to uh, close my notes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll get to it eventually, but Hookins ended up taking Lithgow's advice. Not only did he study in London, but he ended up living there for most of his life playing host to the likes of Marlon Brando and Martin and Charlie Sheen in his ha- home in Pimlico. I don't know the what? correct pronunciation of that either. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know how to take any of this. He Okay, so what we've learned so far is that Porkins, the actor who played Porkins, Hootkins, had a fascinating career. Um, uh, he was in Batman, actually. I didn't know that. But he was in all kinds of Lucasfilm projects. He was in all kinds of movies. Um, and also, he killed JFK. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do with this rabbit hole. I feel like this we is... have to devote time to it but it just ends like that it just ends this with is really peak this fucking podcast <laughs> it, i mean this is really <laughs> indicative of what this whole show has become uh, are you saying that pridefully or disdainfully <laughs> i don't know anymore man. it's all i have so many confusing feelings <laughs> No, <laughs> oh, we have a podcast to do. We have interesting things to talk about. You know, now we know that Porkins was originally supposed to be Job of the Hut in the human form too, which is interesting. I can't stop thinking about this fucking JFK fact. I don't know what to do with it. It's just it has put my brain already tired from a long day into information overload. 
Listen, it's not every day that you learn the truth about what really happened in one of <laughs> the most historic moments in American <laughs> history. It's not every day that you just stumble upon this information. Well, now that kind of explains why you watch A New Hope, and in one of the close-up shots of Porkins, he just goes back to the left. <laughs> Ben, save us from this spiral by bringing up something out about the fucking audiobooks. I'm very sad right now. <laughs> I need a moment. Listen, this is a celebration of Porkins' very interesting life. This, this celebration has brought me into a depressive state via accusations of presidential assassinations. <laughs> This is I, of I, all the of all the conversations I thought we were gonna have this afternoon. Yeah, nobody expected to talk about how Porkins killed JFK, Ben. <laughs> None of us were this and was expecting that. Podcast canceled. That's it. <laughs> we peaked. I don't know if we've peaked or valleyed, but I think it's a peak. The peaks Jesus look just Christ. like the valleys anymore, Josh. I just I love the idea of someone fucking listening to this podcast, just sitting at a fucking red light with their windows down. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Borkins killed JFK. I'm imagining the like <laughs> the random person finding this is their first episode. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want to listen to that Star Wars every week forever. The first episode I ever listened to, they implied that Porkins killed <laughs> We Okay, we more than implied it. <laughs> that, 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 Y'all that flat earther was saying, it. that flat <laughs> earther said Porkins killed JFK. <laughs> I don't know where to go from here. I Chris has said angry. many, many times on the pod. Chris has said many, many, many times on the podcast. Well, where do we go from here? I've never felt this more than right now. What the fuck? Please, please tell me about the book. I'm just sad. And please tell me about the book. Maybe there's a reason why they won't mention Porkins in the book. <laughs> I don't believe. It. I can't be clear Speaking enough. Speaking of not mentioning Porkins, this. so in the book, uh, <laughs> there's the the whole scene when they're on the Death Star and yeah, Han Star chases the the stormtroopers down the hallway. Mm-hmm. This was this was chapter thirteen, which I I made a little note in our Discord to reread chapter thirteen, and I never did, so I want to get this out there before I forget the note. Hey Ben, reread chapter thirteen. All right, I'll do it right now. <laughs> Uh, he, he chases the stormtroopers down the hall, and the narrator's, like, going through a whole little, like, uh, what's going through his head, and he's like, it's, it's, he's chasing them, like, because they stole his ship, they're threatening his, like, life, he needs to pay back Jabba, and he needs to protect the kid, and he needs to make sure Leia's okay, and he, he, like, stops himself, he's like, he's not really doing this for other people, is he? And it just, it immediately made me think of what Chris said the other day, where it's like, or the, the one week where it's like, Han just kind of wants to be the caricature of a piece of shit. Like, Han wants to be the Mr. Lone Wolf guy, but he actually cares about people. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Uh, you should probably mention what versions of the books you ended up reading. Here. Oh, yes, I meant to preface this. So... I mean, I, all of it got lost on Porkins, so. Yeah. Lost on Porkins. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Oh, I hate everything. <laughs> I want to die. I want to die. Um, I ended up uh, reading the, uh, I guess, reimagining would be the right word. Novelization they did in 2015. So these are actually ones produced post-Disney buyout. 
uh, the the audiobook service I have didn't have the original trilogy, like the original original trilogy novelizations. And I really wanted to to get to those, but I I just wasn't going to be able to within the week. This is also the shortest audiobook I've listened to so far, and it took me the longest to get through. I didn't finish it until like two days ago. <laughs> And it was only like four or five hours. I'm glad you had an easier week than you expected. Uh, easy in some ways. <laughs> well, okay, so um, fucking fucking Obi Wan motherfucking Kenobi <laughs> goes from in the fuck in uh, goes from in the movie. <laughs> I don't recall owning a droid. To when they're on the goddamn Millennium Falcon, he looks at R2 and says, and I quote, it's good to fly with you again, my old friend. In the book? In the book. Okay, that seems like probably well, shouldn't this, have happened. Well, no, here's the thing. I mean, you you just said these are post-Disney buyout, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, uh, it's revisionist history. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's no, what I'm saying, the though. Movie, they shouldn't have just... Says, they should... I don't recall ever owning a yeah. droid. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They shouldn't have put that in there in that moment, fully knowing, because it just basically confirmed that he was lying out of his fucking teeth. They shouldn't have put that in the book. I mean, he's clearly a fucking lying-ass old man, so we all <laughs> know, know it. He's just gaslighting a child with a laser sword. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. We use the term a li- s- gaslighting a little too much on this podcast, but when you use it in that context for <laughs> a beam of super molten light, that's probably not the way to go. I realized where the line McClunky comes from this week, um, oh. and I will never get over it. It's actually a line that Greedo says as he's sitting down to talk with Han. And they kind of took it out of there and inserted it in that moment. And I just want to point out, Star Wars, you wonder why you will never be able to have, like, the sci-fi or fantasy legitimate language that other franchises have had. This is the kind (laughs) of shit why. (sighs) Thank you for that final gift, George. I mean, can we actually blame George for this one? Because this happened for Disney+. Plus. Yeah, but you can, because they made an agreement to just play them however George had left them, so it's pretty obvious that George intended to put in McClunky. It George just never like, happened. I won't sign this contract until you make Greedo <laughs> say McClunky right before he dies. <laughs> And they're like, Here's... George, we're giving you an outrageous amount of money. He's like, do you want Star Wars? And they were like, fine. <laughs> the rumor the rumor in innuendo is that George is apparently always, was at the time apparently always just poking at these fucking movies. And whatever condition they were in when they were given to Disney Plus is how they were presented. So McClunky came from that. So all I can picture is just fucking George high in the fucking editing room. Like, want to know what I think would be really good right there? Ma clunky. He just sits back in his seat. With a big ass, like, smile on his face. <laughs> yeah, I, fucking I, I did good you shit-eating grin. Yeah. The editor, the editor sitting by him, not giving a shit, just said, just looks at him like, completely flabbergasted and rather than it being flabbergasted about the edit he's making he just looks at george and says puff puff pass dude puff puff pass and that's how mcclunky came to be it's my head cannon now <laughs> oh McClunky. I, would, I would love to be a fly on the wall of george just walking in for fucking 20 years just walking into fucking skywalker ranch the Lucasfilm's building and just sitting down and saying, what can we change about the original trilogy today? <laughs> Run the movie back. My God. I got... All right. All right. Fucking this, th- this book was 
a trip because they they set up the book it's it's called a new hope the story of a princess a scoundrel and a farm boy so the whole idea of the book is you hear three separate perspective as he perspectives as you go through the book the uh, beginning part is all about leia it's the the first third of the book is called the princess and it's from like the point of view of leia as she gets captured and all, all the shit i i had to endure another interrogation luckily oh, this Jesus. one was a little th- this one was just the part where vader's like oh i'm i'm your friend tell me what i need to know and then it just like stopped which I was thankful for, because I, I don't know if I could put up with that a third time. Uh, and then the second part, it goes to Han. In other words, uh, part one tells us that they jettisoned some droids to a planet, and part two is like, this old man and this kid came up asking if they could get a spot on my ship with some droids. They skipped all of Tatooine? And then, well, they skip to the cantina. So they skip, like, all of Luke's running around and, like, finding out his family died and all that shit. And it takes them till like, halfway through the trip to Alderaan for them. Uh, Luke and Han are having, like, a kind of heart-to-heart because Han's starting to warm up to Luke. And Luke tells him this story, and Han goes, wait a minute. So what you're telling me is, and he essentially, like, describes the events that led up to the cantina from Luke's perspective. But it's not Luke saying it, it's Han repeating what Luke told him. What the fuck? <laughs> it was such a fucking trip. And it that does is. that a couple of times. Like, it, it did that for a couple of other things I can't exactly remember. But it was like, what? That is incredibly strange and then the whole like back half is well not the back but the whole uh back third is just the farm boy which is from luke's perspective yay i blew up the space ball but it was <laughs> i had to sit there for a minute like are are we skipping all of the the trauma that luke has endured up to this point to join a cult that's fucking <laughs> insane why it would you wild. skip all of the fucking character building in A New Hope, which is, you know, it's slow, but it's arguably the fucking backbone of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, that was a fucking... That was a trip. Oh, can you can you guys hold on real quick? Yeah. 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 No, I don't... I don't wanna. But I don't wanna. Fine. Don't do it to me. I have a transmission for major merchandise from Matt at Walmart. Gosh. I thought you had like an emergency Uh, going on for a (laughs) minute. My fucking heart stopped. (laughs) You dick. I love you all. I love you all. So, today, the in the grand return of. Uh, after missing a trilogy of uh, Merch Corner. Uh, we have the child plush robe for women from Star Wars The Mandalorian. Oh, no. When I'm, you've I'm tu- scared. This sounds like nightmare material. I'm scared. When you've tuckered out after a long day of traveling the galaxy, evading the Empire and eating frogs, our plush robe inspired by Star Wars The Mandalorian is the perfect way to get comfy. Featuring a hood with ears and embroidered eyes, plus a pocket. One of our fans taught me how to pronounce this word. I still don't know. Applique? Treat Applique. this rope. Applique? Treat this rope hits about mid-thigh and wraps closed with a plush belt. Um, I want everyone to know as I save this. Um, I usually will pick one out beforehand. Not had one picked out, but it's nowhere near as bad as this. Um, This is a trip. I'm just going to link the page rather than put up the picture because I would have to Google search to get the picture right now. So here it's coming in Skype. I am legitimately horrified by this. (laughs) 
<laughs> what? Oh! Fuck. Oh. oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Would you like to describe for the podcast listeners no. what this abomination I looks not. like? What I the not. fuck? I'm not going to sleep tonight. It looks like it wants to eat my children. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it have a frog in the pocket? It looks so happy. Like, do they have to keep reminding us that Baby Yoda committed, like, a small genocide? Okay, we can't call eating a frog a small genocide. We can call eating fucking the last brood of a woman yes, frog exactly. is genocide. Okay, yeah, that actually is. I didn't, <laughs> I've never, I still haven't seen the Mandalorian. Okay, so I'm going to do my best to describe this. Uh, and Imagine your worst nightmare and turn it into Baby Yoda and then make it look comfortable but terrifying. What's Disney's obsession with applique? <laughs> I don't know. My, my favorite um, is just so they have they have a oh Jesus Christ I zoomed in on it. <laughs> they have the way they have it laid out is like they have the hood yeah but like the the bottom part is like folded yeah. like to make it look like just a giant gaping mouth. <laughs> yeah, it's it really is the way the hood sits when it's not on someone's head that, that creates the damn... true horror. Oh here. God, it was a goddamn nightmare. And we're all worse um, off for having experienced it. I, I want I want the people listening. I had one planned, and then I went to open uh, the school the thing because I forgot to save the link so that I could read it off. And I found this. And I was like, well, this changes everything. <laughs> I hate this so um, much. It's a bathroom. To, can't wait to wear this with my silver Crocs. It looks like <laughs> someone skinned Baby Yoda. To. <laughs> Kind Rape. of, yeah. Ugh. There's a, it, it's a simple bathrobe. There's a little happy frog in the left uh, pocket. And then there's the mandible face. The mandible face. That's what it so is. obviously, it's a hood that will go over your head. So it probably doesn't look that bad in that way. But the way the hood sits when you play, put it down. It's got the two eyes, big eyes of Yoda, baby Yoda, the little eyebrows. And then since that's where the end of the hood ends, the two sides are naturally built to kind of like come in and return to the bathroom. But because of the way it's set up, there's a lighter texture that is on the inside of the hood. And the two sides look like the mouth. Like a yeah, fucking... they're like rolled in on each other, or on themselves. Yeah, the way they... So like the edges look like <laughs> laughing, like like laughing marks, and the fucking sides of the mouth come in and look like goddamn pincers, like a bug's fucking pincers, and it looks like it's gonna eat me, and why, I hate why, it. Why wouldn't they just like I'm looking at the uh, the page, and there's four pictures. None of which have, like, a model wearing it or something, which would easily, like, take away all the nightmare fuel that the existence of this thing is. Well, there is another one on here that doesn't look as bad, but looks derpy as hell. I'm not going to open another link you send me for the next 48 hours. No, I'm not going to, because it's from the same page. (laughs) It's on the same page. Um, it's one that, where the two sides are folded entirely inward, but it looks like, oh, yeah, like that. a fucking paper goddamn puppet, like you would make in preschool. Yeah, like a paper bag But puppet. also, yeah, but it, also, it's got, like, this weird design where the hood is a mouth, so now all I can think of is if I get in this robe, Baby Yoda will have eaten me, and I don't think I want to be in... Baby Yoda's gastro acids. Thank you for coming the, to Merch Corner. The way you just Major phrased that, just like, that. The, the way you just phrased that, like, totally shut my brain off for a second. I swear <laughs> to God. I just, like, my brain was just like, wait. Fucking what? <laughs> Major merchandise has sold out at Planet Walmart. Thank you. God, I wish my... I knew there was a reason I haven't done... Body. 
I know I knew there was a reason why I was waiting. I've been waiting for four weeks to do Merch Squad, and I just wasn't happy with the one I had because I was destined to find this. God, Destiny's a fucking asshole. <laughs> to, to anyone with that name, I apologize. I don't mean you. I'm sure you're a great person. I have no momentum today. I am so fucking dead today. And that's between finding out the the truth of my hero and, <laughs> and this nightmare feel Josh has just induced me with. Chris, how it's, are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> I, uh, this, look, like I said, it's not every day you get to be a part of history and, you know. Jack Porkins, man. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought? He was such a nice guy. <laughs> I want to I wanna talk about something. Is it Jack Porkins killing JFK? Because that's all I can think about. No, it's it's the, the second favorite thing that you guys love me talking about on the podcast. Okay. <sighs> it's not pod racing. You fucking it bastard. Is the Star Wars Holiday Special. How? How? Han is talking to Chewie in this book. And there, so so there's this whole weird fucking scene in the cantina before he talks to uh, Luke and Ben. And he just has, Han just has this woman sitting in his lap. And he can't remember yeah. her name. You want to know why that is the case? The cantina was filmed like three times because George was never happy with it. In one of the original cuts, he had a lady sitting in his lap. God. Oh, that. Uh, but anyway, she. Uh, he's he's got this lady sitting in his lap, and he can't remember her name because he's like, is it such and such from this spaceport? Is it this person from that place? And eventually, he like he guesses at her name, and she gets all pissed off and like storms off, like rightfully. And uh, Chewie makes some kind of comment. You can't tell because he's he's Chewie. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why I felt the need to explain that. And uh, <laughs> in case anyone who's not sure, Chewie doesn't speak English. <laughs> I didn't know that after watching this four times in half a year, Ben. Thank I you. Un I understood him just fine today. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I understood when Chewie was speaking colors. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Chewie says something in Sherwook, and Han looks at him and he goes, well, you're the married one. So this movie directly references Mala. Yeah, the... Oh, I thought Chewie's it was the other way wife. around. I thought they were referencing that really bad comic where... They had Han get married during before the events of A New Hope. I thought that was what was being referenced. Oh no, no, that that was weird. It was weird. I totally forgot that existed until right now. Jesus. I did too. I heard you say I misunderstood the situation I for a second there because I just blacked out. I blacked out for a second from what you were saying because I was thinking about I was thinking about Porkins killing JFK, and then. <laughs> I stepped back in, and I thought we were talking about that. We, we've really created a strange <laughs> mythos here at Star Wars Every Week Forever. Like, we have, like, <laughs> the, the Star Wars Every Week Forever expanded universe. We have made this podcast completely unlistenable for any new people, and I'm sorry, but also I'm really not, because I'm having so much fun. I'm dead inside. It falls apart more and more every episode, and just when you think it can't get worse, it just keeps going. I mean, I mean and that's the best thing about the podcast. You know? I feel like, and the people who listen to the podcast now would probably agree, and the people who have just started listening will absolutely not agree, that that's part of the appeal, that it's just watching us mentally fucking decline <laughs> over the course of the rest of our lives. 
Which, by the way, doesn't sound like a healthy decision I made here when I said, hey, let's watch Star Wars every week forever. So, Chris. So, Ben. I, I have a note directed at you. Oh, no. And I so, can uh, corroborate this note. J- Josh was actually present for this. So, I, uh, uh, Josh and I were uh, hanging out a bit. Two days ago, like a couple days ago, earlier this yeah, week. Yeah, I needed a ride, and I asked Ben, and I was present for this. I had like ten minutes left in the audiobook, and Josh looked at me. I'm like, I'll put music on. He's like, No, no, you can finish this. So, uh, he listened to the 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 metal ceremony a bit, and then after that, it cuts to author's notes they had at the end. And this author, Alexander Bracken. She references her three biggest inspirations for this book, which happened to be her imagination, which I adored, the original script written by George Lucas, and the goddamn radio drama. <laughs> Legitimately, <laughs> legitimately, Ben and I looked at each other and said, Chris isn't going to believe this. That's amazing. And Josh goes, wait, does she mean? And I'm like, I don't know. And Josh is like, yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. And I said, I said, the Brock Peters redemption arc lives <laughs> on. <laughs> oh, my God. To be fair, she thanked um, Lucasfilms for all three of these things. Um, I would like to directly thank who should have been mentioned in that mo- moment. Thank you, Nigel. Yes, indeed. Nigel should have gotten a shout out there. Although perhaps that was written before those went up. But still, shout out to Nigel. Still, shout out to Nigel, friend of the show. Friend of the show. Of the, we've never like, we have all these show. friends of the show who don't. We have all these friend of the show who have no wanna, idea we even exist. You know what? I'm going to fucking call him out. We have never <laughs> once spoken to Nigel, but apparently we have, like, this loyalty to him, or them, or listen, her. Listen, Nigel's or my them. dude, all right? But we found someone who shamelessly re-uploaded their work and got yeah. so fucking angry about it. We did. Uh, yeah. We, oh, we were, like... Fucking... brainstorming solutions like, like like what do we do what do we do about this how do we help what nigel do we, what do we do with our influence of like two audience members <laughs> yeah three, three, three like this three. isn't right like we were building like a fucking resistance to like we're... Oh my God. <laughs> it's just like that movie i watch every week <laughs> Yeah, I I discovered that. I went I went on I was on YouTube. I I usually fall asleep with my my TV on. I just set a sleep timer and I doze off. And I was scrolling through what to put on and I have a lot of like like Star Wars stuff in my YouTube feed. And I I took a picture of my TV a while ago. This was a few weeks ago. Maybe like 2 months ago. And it was the the A New Hope radio drama and I had it highlighted. I'm like I can't escape. And Josh and Chris looked at it, and then somebody goes, "Did somebody re-upload this?" And I yeah, looked. I'm like, I was the one who Nigel originally got very, up. very angry. <laughs> I was like, "This wasn't Nigel's video. What the fuck?" And it's all the same edits, and all the work, and I'm very angry about it. And they literally copy pasted the fucking the description. descriptions. Where Nigel describes all of the work they did on this. Fuck that person. If for some strange reason you're listening to this, fuck you. Okay. <laughs> Watch that be like Nigel got locked out of their account, so they uploaded <laughs> okay, We will it. issue an apology to Nigel. <laughs> Nigel is the only person who we will issue an apology to if it turns out that it is Nigel and they got locked out of their account. But otherwise, if it was someone else, fuck you. Oh, I miss the radio dramas. Well, speaking of the radio dramas, uh, Chris, do you ben. remember the the part 
about the uh, the flight simulator they had at the Rebel base. No. Oh, I thought that was. I I believed it was in the radio dramas where Luke I mean, showed from probably Rebel was, base. but that. I and don't yeah. They put him in. Chris the, is also on another plane of existence right now, so you Chris can't is, trust him to remember. Chris things. is becoming one with the Force right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a. I believed I'll have to double check in the radio drama. There was a scene where they they put Luke in a flight simulator when he first gets to the Rebel base. Yeah. Yeah, sure. uh, they expanded on that in the book, and it was like what, uh, what version of Microsoft Flight Simulator was it exactly? <laughs> <laughs> was it, it was... just the ride at Disney? <laughs> I was just gonna say it was just soaring at Disney Mr. World. Mr. Skywalker, please keep your hands and feet within the simulation at all times. I've been to Disney once in my life. It was in sixth grade. And I ruined two families' plans, very strictly planned plans for Disney because I insisted on going on that ride three times. <laughs> I've also been to Disney one time in my life. I almost didn't leave with my life. Ouch. <laughs> You've talked about how you got a huge stroke that. in Disney before. I almost died in Disney World. I built, and now, I built a lightsaber at Disney. Have you talked to Kathleen well, Kennedy about well, I'm, getting I'm you glad, monetary compensation? I'm glad that we have all these warm Fuzzy memories of our trips to Disney World, guys. I got really <laughs> sick the one day, though. So, oh, poor Ben got sick one of the days. <laughs> one of the days in Disney World. <laughs> I hallucinated. I almost died. Please don't die. I was, like, seven years old, and I almost died. Happiest Have place you? in the world, my ass. <laughs> Guys, I just want to talk about a flight simulator. <laughs> and now talk I'm getting yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> I will have my vengeance. <laughs> That's the subtext of this podcast. Star Wars Every Way Forever. And now I'm getting yelled at. <laughs> talk about the flight simulator my friend so luke rolls up at the base and he's like yo give me a space boat <laughs> <laughs> and luke skywalker shows up in his fucking <laughs> coop to fill <laughs> just like hey yo hey yo rebels <laughs> and he's like yo i want that x-wing over there he actually sees the x-wing he ends up getting and he's like I'm going to fly that one. And he ends up with it, and I'm very mad about it. But he, uh, are so you, he rolls up in there. Are you, are you angry because <laughs> a fantasy character in a Star Wars book called Dibs? Is that where we're at now? What? You're angry. No, no, he hasn't even been called Dibs. He just looks at it and he goes, I like that one. I'm going to fly that one. And he just ends up getting it, and I'm just like, Okay. I feel like Did you're we... only mad about this because Porkins didn't get to fly one. No, because I didn't know Porkins wasn't in it until after this. <laughs> God damn! And you're now just I just picture for an excuse to bring up Porkins again, so you can talk about JFK again. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> Every time we go silent on this podcast, my brain goes back to Porkins <laughs> being ancillary to JFK's assassination. I don't want to think about that anymore, but the moment I lay down for bed tonight, I'll be like, but did Porkins kill JFK? Porkins is the grassy knoll. The answer is not less than 1%. Spiritually, Josh is with Porkins on the grassy knoll. (laughs) (laughs) I wish that wasn't so long and I could make that (laughs) the title. (laughs) Also, I'm pretty sure we would get banned. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are we far enough? I know you're not supposed to curse in a YouTube video for the first minute and a half. Are we... F- is 45 slash 50 minutes into a podcast <laughs> far enough to imply that? <laughs> so this flight simulator... 
Yeah, please, thank you. Luke rolls up, and he's like, yo, I'm gonna fly that X-Wing. And the dude at the <laughs> flight simulator is die. like, yo, dude. <laughs> right back to the yo. <laughs> you gotta sit in this, uh, not X-Wing, and be in an X-Wing. And he was like, gosh darn it, I'll do it. And... <laughs> I'm trying to mentally picture <laughs> this Luke Skywalker who all says "yo" as a start a sentence starter, and then says, there's "Gosh a, darn it, I'll do it." There's a crudely drawn cartoon in my head playing through as I'm describing these events. It, like is, they're sticking. Does he have the same? Does he have the same walk as Tobey Maguire in Spider-Man Three? No. Is he? Is he the? I got banana bread. Hell yeah, guy. Is that this Luke Skywalker? <laughs> no. But I wish. <laughs> I just blew up the Death Star. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> what do we say when Biggs dies? Hell no. Hell no. What do we say when Porkins <laughs> dies? Hell no. Hell yeah. Josh, you son of a bitch. I was... I was in, you said... You have to understand, every time you bring up Porkins, oh my, my brain goes to another place where I'm trying to figure out if Porkins killed JFK. I don't, I don't know if Chris is the one transcending dimensions right now. I think I might be. I don't know if I'm running a fever or, like, if if this podcast has induced, in, uh, fucking, I can't even find the word, fucking injected fucking lethal poison into my veins, but I'm not okay. God. <laughs> It's like we're all we all have totally normal days, and yeah. then we sit down to record this podcast, and something breaks in our fucking brains. <laughs> Luke sits down in the X wing, not X wing, and mother fucking Legend Tilly's fucking runs on over. He's like, "Yo, dude, uh, what <laughs> is this?" <laughs> production of Star Wars you're putting on. I'll never let you finish the story, this apparently. Is this theater in my hometown? What are we doing? Yo, dude, you gonna uh, fly in the X-Wing machine? And Luke's just like, hell yeah. And Wedge is like, well, let me give you some advice. And Luke's like, nope. And he just starts the simulation. <laughs> nah, be, I don't roll like that. <laughs> <laughs> Leia walks up to Han and she's like, yo, it'd be totally stellar if you stuck around for this assault on the Death Star. Can, can we do a, like, just no. a rotation where I run through the, the plot this way and just make pit yeah. stops whenever we need to talk about stuff? Oh my god. This is like, this is when I was writing my fantasy stories. This is how I described my stories. Like, they were written really well. All my notes were really good. But I would just so casually describe everything. <laughs> so, Luke's like, nah, and he starts the simulation. <laughs> and God. He, like, makes it 30 seconds, because he doesn't know what the fuck is happening. And yeah. Wedge is like, that actually wasn't too bad. And... Luke was like, I should have listened to your advice. <laughs> and Wedge <laughs> sits down with Luke and explains how X-Wings work. And there's like a leaderboard on the 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 X-Wing simulator. And Wedge is at the top, obviously, because Wedge is a badass. And Luke's like, alright, let's do this. And oh, he starts God. the simulation again, and he just, like, he, he utterly, like, lets the Force, like, take over, and he does all that that shenanigans. And... Luke, Luke. Do you want to totally fuck over your friend standing in the Rebel Alliance? <laughs> Use the Force. <laughs> Let the Force be with you always. Luke. <laughs> Luke was guiding you... Luke to shit all over Wedge's high school. <laughs> Luke, do you want to win an utterly unimportant contest at the end of the day? Use the force, Luke. So, 
I'm sure you guys see where this is going. Luke gets out of the, the cockpit at the end of the thing, and he's like, whoa, that was awesome. And ever, all, <laughs> the whole of Red Squadron is standing there, except for Porkins. Except for Porkins doesn't exist. <laughs> I'm so mad Porkins. about it. Because <laughs> Porkins was he's too busy assassinating JFK. <laughs> Porkins has a parade to watch. <laughs> And he ended up scoring higher than Wedge. So in other words, in Luke's second time ever sitting in an X-Wing cockpit, he scored higher than Wedge and Tilly's. I mean, of course, his father blew Fuck up. And- <laughs> Who, who's the Mary Sue now, Reddit? <laughs> I would like to apologize that we so painfully stretched out that story on you because we're (laughs) fucking morons and Jet Porkins' attempted assassination on John F. Kennedy has destroyed our brains. (laughs) The way I said that, it makes it seem like there were (laughs) two shooters and one of them was Porkins when, in fact, Porkins was the only shooter and he succeeded in his mission. (laughs) What the fuck has happened to us? <laughs> what, is, what is this? This seems like this podcast is becoming not only therapy but stress relief. I really I... think we are regular people who speak like regular people most of the week. <laughs> We're not. We are no, not. you're right. You're Josh, you cannot straight. honestly in good faith make yeah, that you're statement. Yeah, right. you're right. You're right. But Josh, like this is adults. This, this is the most time that you and I spend together where we're using our actual voices. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? We're normal people. Or when you're not doing a pale imitation of the accent I do every week. <laughs> I learned something this week. Yeah, please tell us. I learned that pork is guilty. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Ben. I really am. I can't stop. Go ahead. No, I'm good. No, go ahead, please. No, I'm good. No, Ben, please. Ben, go ahead. I can't can't emotionally take this anymore. (laughs) I'm so sorry. I really am. I really am. It's just... <laughs> what, you, what do you do when the man you've looked up to for 24 years <laughs> is accused of assassinating JFK? <laughs> it's just a stinger of a new Hallmark movie. <laughs> If you have any more notes, get them out now because I can't guarantee that I'm going to be able to control myself much longer. I I just wanted to have a fun time. (laughs) Talk about some pod racing. (laughs) Just enjoy myself with the lads. Uh And now I'm having a crisis. (laughs) And I'm not actually crying, so fuck you. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. This has been Star oh, Wars no. every week for us. Right. We haven't learned what Ben I we haven't learned what Ben learned. 
I tried to give you a chance, and you were like, I can't do this. So oh, I thought fuck you. you. This has not been the Star Wars ahead. every week forever. <laughs> this ben, you can been listening to a different... <laughs> this is not the podcast you are looking for. <laughs> Tarkin owns slaves. Whoa, whoa. All right. Well, <laughs> I, you know, when I went to uh, exit... And you so strongly stopped me. I should have figured it was something this powerful. Please tell us more. I can't. That's like, it's just like a throwaway thing where Leia's like what? walking onto the bridge and she's like talking about how much of a piece of shit Tarkin is. And she just has a throw, like there's one sentence where it's just like, he had slaves. <laughs> and I was like, fucking excuse me. Leia's like, yeah, and he had slaves. Anyway, I- Moving on. <laughs> anyway, please don't blow up my planet, slave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Tarkin, Tarkin's a slave owner. That that's all. Okay. I wish I, I mean, could yeah, elaborate just, on that more. I don't know why I'm surprised that a space Nazi had a slave, but I, I am. I've just never thought of it. Yeah, it's like and like you say, John. Like it makes sense. Yeah. But <laughs> like, you've never thought of it. And someone sat down and thought, hmm, definitely has slaves. I mean, yeah, he does. And but it's... also, what? I'm also just thinking of, of Tarkin uh, walking around in the fucking slippers he wore on the set. <laughs> <laughs> and thinking about how much of a terrible piece of shit person he is in fucking slippers. This person who signs orders to blow up planets. He owns slaves. He has no regard for anything in the galaxy. He even wears bunny slippers. They weren't actually... Wait, hold on. Does he, in the book, do they actually say he wears bunny slippers? No, he doesn't actually wear okay. slippers in the books. He's supposed to be wearing the, the boots, but, like, for those that don't know, uh, the actor for Tarkin, who I can't remember the name of right now, uh, they, they gave him, like, like, boots that would look like you know, match the rest of his Nazi-esque uniform. And they didn't fit his feet, because he is very large feet. So he just straight up told George, I'm not wearing those. Can you just film me from the waist (laughs) up? And he wore slippers on the set the rest of the time of filming. And I adore that. Peter Cushing, by the way. Peter Cushing, who is no longer with us. May he rest in peace. Uh, but Disney won't let they, that stop yeah, them from putting him in more movies. One day, we'll probably have a meltdown about how fucked up that is. Yeah, when we do Rogue One one of these days. Yeah. I mean, it happens Which... to Revenge of the Sith as well. Oh, shit, that's right. Which, I will have read the Rogue One novelization by that point, too. Hey. I'm, I'm like, halfway through the Solo novelization, and I want to fucking rip my ears off. I don't know why you would do that to yourself. I can't imagine that one it's that great. Although I did just rewatch that movie like three days ago and I forgot how much I actually do enjoy that movie. I just found out that fucking Beckett this this is a rant for Solo, but Beckett killed Aura Singh? Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that was the comment that you sent to Discord at like <laughs> Two o'clock in the afternoon that yeah. I had no idea what the fuck you were talking about. Yeah, apparently Beckett, the guy who, like, takes Han Solo under his wing, yeah. killed Aura Singh. And yeah. I'm just like, fucking how? Because I mean, Aura not... Singh is supposed to be, like, one of the big bounty hunters of the Didn't galaxy. Didn't he just kind of, like, yeah. happen to trip her off a cliff or something? Yeah, he makes the comment, oh, I didn't kill her, but the fall did. Yeah. And I'm just so he pushed her off a ledge. Yep. Really? Just waiting for the other shit to drop here. Oh, that reminds me. Fucking Han Solo oh, apparently God. used to say some of the most cringy shit ever. So when people would ask him if he was like taking partners or if he worked alone, he used to say, It's all in the name Han Solo. Oh, God. <laughs> the name an Imperial Stormtrooper <laughs> yeah, the name a, gave him because he doesn't want to deal with litigation. The name an Imperial recruiter gave him because he was bored. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, I'm sufficiently broken for the week. <laughs> okay. Chris, do you have any other notes on watching Star yeah. Wars Episode Four: A New Hope high as fuck? I wouldn't say high as fuck. <laughs> okay, hi. Uh, how how high fuck is exactly? Um, <laughs> but I'll find it. Oh, this has been Star Wars every week forever. I was about to say who can feel <laughs> <say. laughs> That's where Hoogans went. Oh my god, Hoogans is Porkins in disguise. That's how Hoogans ended up on you. Fake his own death. (laughs) That's what happened to Hoogans. Good night. (laughs) I'm going to need legitimate therapy after today. It's not our fault. It's not our fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Jack Porkins, man. Stop. Please stop. Can you please stop? My heart feels a sadness. <laughs> Hello, all you beautiful people, and thank you very much for joining us on yet another week of Star Wars Every Week Forever. We upload every Wednesday around noon on various platforms, including YouTube, Spotify, TuneIn, and many others. If you have any friends, companions, people you would like to torture with our presence, feel free to send them our way. You know where to find us. If you would like to interact with the show and the various uh, co-hosts, being me, Josh, and Chris. You can find us quite easily on Twitter, at SWEWF. We check there very regularly, so it's easy to get a hold of us. And I hope all of you wonderful people have a glorious rest of your day. Until next we meet, may the Force be with you.